Hey guys, one of the things that we always say in the Best Practices Show and Act Dental here is data removes all emotion. With great data, you can make improvements in your practice and you can create a great practice and a great life with it. And today we've got a worldwide expert on how data can improve your practice, specifically when it comes to marketing. His name is Curtis Marshall from Dental Intel, so you're not going to want to miss this. Stick around and welcome to the Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're a dentist trying to go your, grow your business, you're looking at marketing, you're looking at everything. Sometimes you're pulling your hair out, sometimes you don't have any hair at all to pull out and you're wondering how do I grow my practice and get more new patients and there's got to be a solution to this. And today I got my good friend Curtis Marshall from Dental Intel on today and this guy is a genius. He's my go-to guy when we really want to find out the real solution in the data analytics behind it. And today we're going to be talking about how you can get more new patients without spending any additional dollars. And he's got a magical secret. You do not want to miss this. So do me a favor, grab a pen and hit the share button. You're going to love this. Now, a couple show notes. While we're shooting this, you're going to have questions. Add questions to the feed and you're going to see my man Curtis is very good at responding in social media. We want to make sure you get the most out of this. Also, share this with your team. A lot of times dentists will watch 70 to 100 podcasts, but they don't share one of them with their team members and you work with them every day. Encourage them to do some learning too and together we learn all together. So my friend, good friend Curtis, you've been our resident guest expert, the brainiac. See, I always say you're the good looking smart one. I just have to be the bald funny guy and just ride on your coattails. But if somebody's watching this and they've never seen Curtis before, never been to the show before, who is Curtis Marshall and what is Dental Intel? Who are you, brother? Uh, well, you know, Kirk, thank you so much for always having me on your show. You got the best fans out there, the best participants. I love their questions that they ask. Uh, and so I'm, I'm super grateful to be on with you again today. Uh, Curtis Marshall, uh, here in Utah, based out of Utah, have uh, three beautiful girls. I'm just trying to raise them right. I follow Kirk's example of raising, raising children, uh, doing my best I can there. On the side, I also work with Dental Intelligence. So, uh, dental Intelligence, we're the leader in providing actionable data to offices rather than them worrying about the lagging stuff that happened in the past. We want them to know what to do today. So that's ultimately who I am. And uh, we're going to be talking about some cool ways to get new patients today uh, without spending an additional dollar. And then it's, it's mind blowing because back when I used to work in an office, we were spending, Kirk, $30,000 a month to acquire new patients. Now, $30,000 a month, but we were getting a great return. We were getting close to three to 400 new patients a month, which is great. But if we could have got more new patients without spending in a dollar, I would have looked like the hero. And I want you to look like a hero. So let's, uh, let, I'm really excited to be on your show today. Well, you can make me look like the hero, but you're going to be the hero and you're going to be a hero for a lot of other people because this is a this is a really important piece of information that you're going to be sharing today. And really, it's not rocket science. You just need to know how it works and the data and you can easily apply what Curtis is going to give you tomorrow. Like tomorrow, you can actually if you're watching this at lunch. You can apply this the second okay. half of your day. Now, if you've been living under a rock or you've been, you know, just never haven't been outside or haven't turned, you don't know what Dental Intel is, but I'm just going to tell you it is a game changing platform. It is without question one of the greatest tools we've acquired as a dental coaching company because it gives us great visibility on analytics. Now, here's what I'm going to say before we get started, Curtis, is that if you don't have any data, you're just guessing. You're just guessing 
and you're trying to build a business, but when you have data, you now know how to build a great team. It's it's very important more now than ever in dentistry and business. I couldn't imagine running a baseball team without even having data. Data allows you to be able to validate decisions. It removes all emotions. And if we don't have any data, we're just having a conversation about what we think we each know. Now, Curtis, let's talk about the marketing thing. And one of the things that happens is I know a lot of doctors watching this. If you're building a great restorative practice, but you're spending a lot of dough to get a lot of visibility. And you hear words like impressions, Google AdWords, like putting it out there. So you have thousands of people watching your message and some of them pick up the phone and call. But that's where it kind of goes bad, right? Well, not only that, Kirk. Some people don't spend, they spend almost nothing on marketing, right? I mean, I right. hear that often. I always spend on, not true. You're taking care of your patients and your patients are referring people. So not only do you have like, some people may not be spending a lot of dollars, but how are you getting new patients? It's either because you're doing, getting referrals or because you're spending dollars on people right. you don't know. Right. So whichever way you are, you're spending time and effort to take care of your patients so that they will refer to people or you're using your hard earned cash and right. saying, hey, come into my office uh, and you're using cash. Either way, you're spending your time, your money to get new patients to come into the door. Yeah. Amen, brother. Now, a lot of people have tried this. They've tried to like figure out what's calling, what's coming in, what's being converted. There's a couple, there's a couple things if you're watching this, I want you to take a couple notes, but you mentioned there's four, actually there's five benchmarks and we're going to take each one of these apart. Let's go through each one of the benchmarks here. Well, before we do that, remember there's a funnel, any marketing right. funnel, there's a funnel, right? And we could make it a lot bigger, but we're going to make it fairly simple today. Right. Ultimately, though, Kirk, if we have a funnel for marketing, what's the end output down here? What do we want? What do we want from new patients? Let's just go there and not make it too. Let's not too, get too crazy about wording. It's really acceptance. You want patient acceptance on dentistry, you know, restorative acceptance for treatment, correct? Which means if I get somebody to accept and I do their dentistry and I collect their dollars, what does that mean? That means you're going to grow revenue, top line revenue, ultimately be more profitable. But the bigger thing here is people are going to get healthy. You're going to start taking care of it because there's no shortage of treatment. Here's the other thing. People think, well, you know, you're hard selling. No, you're not. There's no shortage of disease coming into your office. And as a healthcare provider, you got to get people as healthy as possible, as fast as possible. You know? The, so I love that. That is to me because the pu general public, they don't get it. They don't right. get the importance of a profi. Actually, they don't even know what a profi is, first off, right? But that's, right. that's one thing. Another big one, though, Kirk, is that now you can do, if you get people to accept, like you said, the end goal, if you get people to accept, that means you can do more vacations. That means right. you can pay for your house. That means that you have, can pay for your spouse to go on a shopping spree. That means that you can... Uh, do lots of things that you want to you hit your personal goals if we get people to accept. Not only that, but I love how you also put it into patient care. So if that's the ultimate goal, we want to know how to make that bigger. We right. want to get larger rather than it being like this. We want it to be like this, right? We right. want to open that funnel so that we get more in. So let's start at the top. What first happens? So we start at the top or are we going to go one notch up? One notch up. What happens okay, one notch up. Well, if people are going to accept, you got to present, right? Okay, so we're going to go from the bottom up. So okay. we want them to pre accept, then you need to present treatment. Okay. okay. And, and so let's just use a number. Let's say 50% of everybody you present to are going to accept. So if you're going to have one at the bottom, you're going to have to do how many at the next stage? So. Uh, to make that easy, let's uh, <laughs> let's say sixty percent. So wait, 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 you're making this. No, the math is too hard. Okay, what? It's what? It's easier this way. It's easier okay. this way. If okay. I'm gonna have sixty, if I have sixty percent, and I get six people to accept, that means that I diagnosed ten. Ten. Got it. Okay. Okay. I diagnosed ten. Now. Keep it simple for me. My brain is very small. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> You're not supposed to say I know. <laughs>
So if you want six to accept and you got 60% acceptance, then you got to present to 10, right? right. That's 60%. Okay. Correct. Which means that now that I need to know how many times I present, I do an exam in order to present treatment. So on average, we see 50-ish percent, uh, sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher, but 50% of your exams get diagnosed. Okay. So that means you have to do 20 exams to get 10 to accept, to get six people to say yes. Absolutely. Got it. Okay. Got I'm that? tracking. So then how do we get an exam though? We got to get them how? to schedule in your office, right? Correct. So the next step above that is if I call somebody and schedule, mm -hmm. what percent of those patients actually show up? Well, you're the data guy, and I would brag that our practices do it really well, but on a national average with over 7,000 or 8,000 installs, you basically have visibility on every private practice in the United States now. You know the data. What, what's typical? What, what's your gut tell you? And it's okay. You can be wrong, Kirk. What's your gut tell you? I would if say the number of calls that actually schedule appointments now. Now, if we're talking about calls that actually get scheduled. No, appointments that schedule that actually show up. Oh, that show up. Uh -huh. So broken. How, what percent of your port patients break their appointments? Would you say, I don't know, for a large practice, probably 50% or 30% maybe? In a private right. practice, it's got to be way smaller. I don't know. You're leading me on without giving me any hints I here. I am. So if you're at 50 or 30%, you better call Kirk right now. You, you should not be there. Okay? Well, we're talking so, about the masses here. We're talking about... 210,000 dentists in the United States. We're not talking about ACT Dentals, few here that kill it. We're talking about everybody. Right. So we're seeing, let's just say 10% to make numbers easy, 10%. So okay. if I have 20 people that I do an exam on, that means that I actually scheduled 22 people. I right. called and got scheduled 22 and 20 showed up. Gotcha. So we're Gosh. going up the ladder now. We're climbing up to find out where the problem is. So yeah. if I have 22 people that call and schedule, the next thing that we want to know is how many people called the office and didn't schedule or, right. did, or did. How many did schedule? Yeah. Now I want to, I want to say one thing. This is where the opportunity lies because nobody knows this number. We've been to seminar after seminar. You're expert after expert say this, but the number of calls to schedule I've heard is about a third. Now, I don't know if that's true, but everybody has a number on that and everybody has an opinion on that. What do you guys see? Okay. So let's say it's a third though for right now. Okay. okay. That means that, well, everything that we've talked about so far, all of that data is in your practice management software, your Dentrix, your EagleSoft, your Open Dental, your Curve, whatever you have. Once they schedule in that software, then we have all the data after that. Right. The so let's use let, So let's no. use what what I've heard so many times from seminar leaders is it's a third. So yeah. you're telling me if 22 scheduled, that would be 66 would have to call, right? Correct. So if 66 people call, I'm answering the phone 66 times, that means that the 22 are going to schedule, 20 are going to show up, you're going to diagnose 10, and six of those people are going to say yes. Absolutely. I'm tracking you. I got it all right here. Good. Okay. okay. And so with that now, we can know exactly what to tweak, what levers to push up, what levers to pull down, what drawers to open. We now know exactly what's happening. The problem is, though, is that we have all the data once they schedule. Who's got the data above that? Meaning the phone calls and even before that, the phone calls. So if I have 66 people who called out of my marketing efforts, how many did I have to send a mailer to or Google ads to or whatever it is to get those people to actually call? No, I, I'm going to use the typical answer that a lot of dentists say. I know who has that data. It's the three ring binder that we have at the front desk where the team members are required to write in each one of the phone calls that they do so diligently every day and record every phone call and report that number every day to the dentist, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 
So, and for me, who used to work in the dental office and I was told to do that, mm -hmm. I would do it once in a while, but most of the time I didn't do it because one of two reasons. Number one is because my doctor wasn't following up with me and I'm like, oh, he didn't ask yesterday, so I'm not going to do it today because he's not going right. to ask me tomorrow. That's the first one. The second one is it's difficult. And what am I going to do with this data? I've got all these pieces of paper over here that I wrote down all this information on and it's useless. Right. I'm not doing anything with it. We might as right. well put it fire starter. Right. right. And oh, oh, let me throw one more in that we've seen in the past. I'm going to leave out a bunch because a bunch of them called for lousy insurances. We don't participate in. And so those don't count. You know what I mean? Those don't count. Right. In my mind, I think they don't count. Yeah, and it's not because the front desk is trying to deceive anybody. Right. It's just because I'm like, oh, well, you know, we don't accept insurance, so I'm not going to put that down because if I put that down, then that's going to lower my score, and I don't want the doctor to see that I got a lower score. Right. But as an owner of a practice, let's mm -hmm. say you have 10 people who call, and eight of those people have insurances you don't accept. I now have data and information, and I want to make the decision whether I want to do that insurance or not. I don't want someone else to make that decision for me. I'm a big boy. I own my own practice. I want to be able to know the information so that I can make an important decision for me and my family. Absolutely. Let me go one layer deeper too, because a lot of people throw the baby out with the bathwater in this. If you have eight calls out of 10 that are about insurance, you're par for the course. Even the practices we coach that don't take a dime of insurance will tell you 80% of the phone calls are about, do you take my insurance? And that's where you can say game on as a private care practitioner and say, I welcome that question. We train people, Curtis, we tell them, oh, you should go, I love that question. Do I to participate with life? Oh, I love it. Bring it to me because the better you get at putting that obstacle here and helping them understand why you're different and why they should choose you, the better you're going to be long term and not subject to the winds of whatever happens with Delta, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cigna, Aetna. We could go on for hours on this. But you know what's so funny, Curtis? As I get older, I don't care. Like I just, I think people need to know the truth. You know what I mean? Like just tell the truth. And the coolest thing, you guys, this is America. You're a dentist. This is the greatest country ever in the greatest profession. You can choose how you want to practice. Yeah. But, 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 but you got to have data. You can't just go, I hate, I hate this insurance. You got to know, hey, look, I've got a challenge here. And what Curtis is trying to point to is diagnostically, if you can diagnose where the problem is, open up the funnel a little bit, what falls to the bottom is exponential. So here's, an, it's so true. Here's what happened in a local office. In fact, it's, it's probably like right there. I'm so distracted by the beauty in the mountains in the back. Do you look at that every day? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> my, that's my view. We got a little cloud cover today. That's not that's fair. That's awesome. So, All right. General office, just right back, there. Back, back to the data. Yeah. There's a dental office just right down the road that we were talking to them about this funnel, right? And we were talking about the top line and how dental intel is only gathering the bottom stuff, so we need to start tracking the upper stuff. And here's what the front desk told me. Oh, Curtis, we don't need to track that. And I go, really? Why? Why? Because every new patient that calls my office schedules. Whoa. I said, really? That's, That's awesome. Let's go ahead and start tracking it because I want to go show the doctor how great you guys are. Yeah. One week went by. One. After just one week, we got 15 calls that came in. Three scheduled. Wow. 15 new patients called in because they were being super diligent. We, were lit we had a few ways of we were listening to phone calls and stuff, but 15 called in three scheduled right now let's paint some light on why this is because yes, let's and be fair it, for team she, members it's she wasn't trying to deceive or anything right she really thought that every pay, new patient who calls in schedules go ahead paint this right. light right and this is the truth i mean every team member is trying their hardest and they're always and let's 
be honest, it's tough working at the front. Like it just is. But the reason that things get dropped and we're unaware is a lot of times we're talking to patients and making outbound phone calls. We're on insurance verification calls, which sometimes average 12 minutes. You know, you're you're talking to a patient, you can't pick up the phone. And so a lot of those calls go on this. Over your ear, over your shoulder talking to you, right? Absolutely. They call during lunch and you're having lunch. (laughs) (laughs) You know, there's calls that are coming in all the time. And I know you think you're getting all of them. And we want you to, but there are calls that are coming in. They ring once because you're on the phone and then they hang up and then you never record that as an opportunity. And they're on to the next practice. And as far as they're concerned, because there's so much going on, I almost didn't even have that phone call. I pick it up. Hey, do you take my insurance? Nope, I don't. Okay, great. Who was that? Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know. Oh, now you're making me think of it. It was a new patient, but really I, I don't want to store anything else up here unless I need to. Right. And as humans, we are all self interested. And so if I'm not able to take care of this, then I'm going to move on. So like you said, is it in front of me? Is a doctor talking behind me? Is it the phone that's ringing? Is it the insurance that needs to be entered? What is it? And this is where we're seeing a huge gap, the biggest gap. If I'm able in that scenario for this doctor right down the road who had 15 new calls, uh, new patients call in and only three scheduled, if he increases that by one, to four instead of three, that funnel, and he spent zero more dollars on insurance, uh, on on marketing, that funnel opens up. Mm -hmm. And we get much larger acceptance of people who accept based based off of the numbers. It's super simple. This one number, how many new patients are calling in and how many are scheduling on top of that, why are they not scheduling? Right, because I know why they're not scheduling. Then it's um, it's super simple. So, Kirk, why would a new patient not schedule? Well, there's a lot of different reasons. Number one, the phone wasn't answered. Number two, the person didn't ask me to make a phone to make the appointment. You can now start to diagnose why people aren't scheduling. On top of it, now here's the important part that Curtis is describing: is that if you don't have the data, again, you're just guessing. Like all change processes, all of them start with one thing. You have to tell the truth, which means you got to know the truth of the situation. And now you can start to fix it no matter what it is. And here's the important piece on top of that. We're not looking for perfect. I'm not looking for 100%. But if we're at 33%, we go to 35%. Then we get to 40%. Now, what we're doing is we're embracing what's called progress. Progress is much more fun than perfect. And every time those percentages are going up, so much more is happening back here that it's an exponential return. And Curtis, like like you said earlier, this isn't costing a dime. It's learning that we're putting back into it and data and adjusting. And then you win and you're able to deal with these problems on a much bigger level. Everybody's happier. Every dentist watching this right now will tell you if I have one more person except case a dentistry you know any type of dentistry per week exponentially the month looks amazing do you know what i mean so that's the story of a great practice is we're not looking for this we're just looking for this just a little bit better each time so i don't curtis how do i find those like okay now you're telling me what to do you're telling me the problem I don't know how to find those numbers because what if I'm a dental Intel customer? I've got all this information. I mean, I've got phones everywhere, all that kind of stuff. Like, what do I do? Do I plug in? With dental Intel, you have everything once they schedule, right? Right. Everything once they schedule. Well, with everything beforehand, uh, when they make a phone call, what happens to those 15 patients who called? Out of those 15 patients who called, what's going on with them? There's one of two ways that I know of. To look at that one is is to manually write it down and uh, please please at bare minimum start doing that tomorrow because what that's going to do or today if possible because what that's going to do is not only going to help those 15 people who are sca- Kirk they're scared mm-hmm. like these people out there they're scared and guess what there are some dental offices that they should not be going to and we all know this 
right? Mm -hmm. The dental offices who are not here listening and trying to be educated, the people, who, the dental offices that don't care for them the way that you care for them, they might go there rather than you. I right. want them to go to your office. So first off, write, please start, start writing it down. How many new patients called and how many scheduled? If it's 10% that schedule, it's okay. Mm -hmm. We want to know what it is though. Right. That's one. The other way is Dental Intel did release a new ser service called Call Insight. Call Insight, if you go to getcallinsight.com, then you will see uh, exactly what I'm talking about. It shows all the information on it. But anybody who has a phone system, any phone system, it doesn't have to be. Um, it doesn't have to be VoIP. It can be a regular analog Ma Bell phone. Any phone system, you can now start to automatically track exactly those 15 new patients who called and see the three that did, but more importantly, the 12 that did not. Right. That's what we want to know. How can I improve? And mm -hmm. so I, those are the two ways that I know of. I don't know of any other way. Now, give me a little insight on Call Insight. I mean, are you able to see the caller ID number, where they're calling from, any kind of that information? I mean, what kind of information do you have? And it, it doesn't have to work with a VoIP system. It could work on a landline, it could work anything. like. Correct, yep. So when the information comes in, we see if it's a patient or not. And sometimes I might call for my work number. So it's saying, hey, I don't know who this number is. Who is it? Oh, it's an existing patient. It's Curtis who's calling. So you can add that number to the, to the patient record. That's one way, right? It's either a patient or existing patient, uh, existing number. Second way is a new patient. So if it's a new patient, then we ask you questions. We say, well, uh, why are they calling in? Is it because of a limited? Is it because of cosmetic? Is it because why are they wanting? Why are they calling? Right. The third thing that we're now tracking with that is saying, did they schedule or did they not? But not just did they not schedule? Did they not schedule because of insurance? Because of cost? Is it? A, are they going for a second opinion? What is the real reason? And it's a drop down rather than a fill in entry form. The benefit to that is now we can put everything into categories and understand what's going on rather than being all over the place. Because if I have 20 categories, it's too hard to understand. So now it's into categories. Yeah. Uh, that's the new patients. The, another one would be like a business, like if it's your lab or somebody like that. And then the fourth one is spam. So if it's okay. spam, you market spam. If it's a dental lab, you market dental lab. If it's a new patient, you market new patient. Or existing patient right because that's one of our frustrations even here as we track number of phone calls and so many of them now are solicitors or spam and your okay. software can, that can sort that you know yeah absolutely okay. yeah so all you do it's super simple you go to get call insight i n s i g h t dot com you can see everything there but more importantly i hope you do that because i love the the, the service is awesome but at least write it down at bare minimum, because if we're writing it down, then we're going to help those patients and we're going to increase that funnel. That's what we want. We want to increase that funnel. So that, that's the main important thing to realize. Yeah. I'm always curious, Curtis, you get a chance to work with thousands and thousands of dentists. I've had you on here so many times. We're out on the road in seminars. And you, when you talk to young dentists, young 32 year old or 30 year old, three-year-old dentist come up to you and go, where do I start? If you were going to project a great future for them, what would you say? Like, these are some things you got to have in place. You know, I would say number one is you got to have some data about the future. You also have to create a learning mindset. So when it comes to things like Curtis has just shared today, you got to think game on. Like, okay, I got to learn how best practices work and then employ them in the practice and get people in a learning you know, mindset. That's one of my favorite things. Even here, I want learners, people that are going to be healthy and improving. What else would you say to a young dentist watching this as they look forward to the future? Well, Kirk, that's probably the best thing to ask somebody. So I look at you and I look at other consultants out there, okay? For you yourself, you're always, oh, well, what's working? Not what did I did that works, but what's working? Maybe this is something that I did in the past. Something that I would really suggest to a new uh, doctor or even existing doctor is understand what the true status quo is, meaning what's truly status quo means what's happening today. Where are you at today? 
and how can you get to where you want to go? So really with that, where are you today and where do you know where you want to go so that you can get there? Mm -hmm. Status quo and goal. That's what I would make sure every doctor understands is where are they at? Where do they want to go? Yeah. Life is short. My a good movie that uh, I watched because I got three girls is Alice in Wonderland. Remember when Alice was walking down the road and she saw the Cheshire Cat and, and there was a split in the road? And it, she said, which way do I go? What did the Cheshire mm-hmm. Cat say? Said, what did, they, what did she say? She said, well, you can pick anyone or what was I? It's been where, so long. Where are, you, where are you wanting to go? Where, where are you wanting where to are you go? go? She's like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Then any road will take you there. That it doesn't matter. It. Yeah. If you don't know where you are and where you want to go, it doesn't matter what decision you make. And that's no. so that's what every young dist- uh, new dentist, existing dentist, old dentist should know is where are you? Where do you want to go? Absolutely, brother. Well, you are a valuable part in helping us and the people we serve get where they want to go. So check it out. Dentalintel.com. Also, I encourage you to check out getcallinsight.com. If you struggle, you need some help. My man, Curtis, will help you out. He's a great asset, great ally. And Curtis, I am so grateful for our friendship, all the things that you get a chance to teach us. And we're going to have you back so many more times and just ask you the tough questions and get the answers from the brilliant Smart, good-looking, funny guy. So cool, cool, cool. Curtis, thanks for joining. Stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. Thank you guys for watching the Best Practices Show. If you found this valuable, which I know you did, do us a favor. Just hit the share button. Share it with your friends. Spread the word. Also, keep sending us suggestions for shows you want to see. I'll have Curtis back, among other guests. And until we see you next time, keep watching the Best Practices Show. You guys have a great rest of your day. 